Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Faith and Friends. Food, fun, and an incredibly <laughs> impacting story that for many will touch close to home. I'm Jennifer Beck, Mark Kuntz, and Andy Lynch, and we're glad that you've joined us today. That's right. We have some incredible stories to share with you today. It's hard to find anyone that has not been affected by cancer, and today we have the story of a local family who had to handle cancer in one of their own children. You don't want to miss that story. Also, a recap from last week's Converge Youth Conference, and... Do you know anyone who will soon be entering college? Well, how to make sure that you know they are prepared, that's coming up. Maybe we can teach them some life cooking skills because we are <laughs> cooking again today here on Faith and Friends. You might remember retired Allen County Sheriff Dan Beck. Not everyone knows he's quite the culinary genius <laughs> and chef. He's stopping by today to teach Zach and I how to make some homemade noodles. But first, our scripture for today, coming to us from James 1, verses 2 through 5. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete and not lacking anything. Guys, that is a scripture passage that I think I, I don't know how many times I have read it. It preaches to me over and over again the importance of uh, what we need to face in our life and how we need to move forward. It's such a linear progression that we have perseverance because if we have perseverance, we can develop the traits we need to have whatever it is to overcome whatever it's facing us. It, 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 honestly, it is one of those verses that a lot of folks have committed to memory and in times of mm -hmm. trouble can just yes. go to that verse instantaneously. Mm -hmm. Certainly a great example of perseverance comes to us from Maria Stein. Sports fans around the area know Ben Kramer. He officiates football, basketball, baseball, and softball games for local high schools and has already made a name for himself as one of the top officials in the state. But last May, he dealt with a call none of us would want. As we see in our OIO, Faith on the Field, his three-year-old daughter became sick. Reagan complained of some stomach pains on, I believe the date was May 21st. Um, I know it was a Monday because I was actually off of work that day to help um, do a little bit of farming with, with, my, with my parents, with my dad and my brother. So he took Reagan to the hospital and they gave her some medicine and sent her home, hoping that would do the trick, but the pain persisted. I can remember coming in that night at, at around 8.30 and Reagan was over there on the uh, living room floor and she was just curled up in a ball, like in, in the fetal position. And so obviously, you know, we did what anybody would do. We, we took her into, uh, I think, urgent care or the ER, uh, one or the other. And, and to make a long story short, they did, um, they did a CAT scan sure. and... That's and finally, at about midnight, somewhere between midnight and 1 a.m., all of a sudden, um, our pediatrician pops into the room. And I'm like, you know, and, and it didn't even dawn on me that that something I just said, you know, wow, what are you know, what are what are you doing here? You know, and then I noticed that she she didn't you know, she didn't have any she didn't have a nice facial expression on her face and she said you know your you know your daughter has you know has has a tumor you can imagine how bad a news that is to to any any parent and i was there with her by myself you know when the doctor said tumor and and, and the first thing you know i asked i said you know is is it cancer and our pediatrician was, and she said, you know, there's a very, very high probability that, yes, it's, it's cancerous. And, um, but she said tumor. So, you know, I'm just, I'm, you know, I'm thinking, okay, tumor, let's just go in and let's just take it out. And, 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 and you know, and I'm thinking, you know, okay, this is terrible news, but maybe the bright side is maybe we can go in and we can just get this tumor out and, and you know, we can, you know, we, we can, there, there could be, you know, a, a, a solution to this. And then, you know, they immediately, you know, we went down to Dayton Children's. We got down there at about 4 a.m. and they ran tests for an entire week. CT scans, MIBG scans, um, all the blood work you could possibly imagine. But you sang your way through it, didn't you? And they had your birthday party, didn't they? The nurses had a birthday party for you because you turned four in the hospital. 
But that party at that time was one of the lone bright spots in this family's journey. For those two weeks though, you know, we went from she's got a tumor and in those two weeks, every time we saw a doctor, the news just kept getting worse and worse and worse because by the time they did all the other scans, um, you know, we found out it wasn't just a tumor in her uh, abdominal region. There was a spot by her aorta. There was a spot on her arm. There was a spot on her lung. There was another spot on her stomach. You know, she actually had a lot of spots. And then the final piece of bad news is when they told us it was in her bone marrow. And, um, and, and that was... That was about, I remember that day, that was about all we could take. Reagan had a bone marrow transplant at Nationwide in Columbus, then radiation at James, and through it all, the community was on their knees for the Kramers. I didn't have any feelings like it was never going to be okay. I, I knew everybody in our town, every community around us was praying for us. I mean, they have, we've had Father Gene come over. He comes over almost every other Sunday and gives you a blessing. Father Schnipke from here, the Maria Stein cluster, and he, I guess early on, he, he told me something that was very important. He said, you know, it's not only important, you know, to pray for your daughter, but you have to pray for the doctors as well so that, you know, you know, God can give them, you know, guidance to, to, to do their jobs well. I mean, we've had stuff even from Netherlands. I mean, <laughs> I don't know anybody from I the think Netherlands. <laughs> I, I went, um, I think it took until she, she was, you know, diagnosed at the end of May, and I think it took until, I'm going to say, September or October until I went to the mailbox and there wasn't some sort of get well card in, in the mailbox. I mean, it was... The, 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 the community support was, was remarkable. And the families battled through treatment after treatment, hospital stay after hospital visit with a positive spirit. What did we call your tumors? What was it? The lamb. <laughs> we, we never ever told her that she had the C word. We just told her that she had balloons in her belly and um, she needed to go to the hospital to, to shrink these balloons and then at some point the doctors were going to take these balloons out. And last month, the good news, Reagan got word the cancer was gone. And this picture surfaced on Twitter, the answer to many prayers all around the region. Well, it's already been an entire week since the UNOH Event Center was filled with more than 400 teens desiring to fill their hearts with the things of God. Converge 2014 may have come and gone, but the seeds that were planted that weekend are just starting to grow. It was a weekend of speakers, music, personal challenges, and this event, Operation Love Lima. Jennifer Beck, Hannah Beck, and Zach Bowers were embedded with the Love Lima crews to see firsthand the impact it had on this community. You're about to do something incredible, and we, we're just excited, ready to charge to the front lines, ready to head out and share your incredible, unrelenting love with Lima. Lord, I pray that as we go out, that you would bring people into our paths that you specifically want to touch today, God. After hearing incredible speakers to challenge your hearts, after singing the praises to God for the digital age and praying for what we are to do next, it's time to head out into the community and truly show what it means to love Lima the way Jesus wants. More than 200 young adults heading out into the community of Lima to show love, group number four, right here at the New Life Church International. I feel awesome just knowing like um, some families can't afford to always have money to go to the store and buy groceries to support for their families, so I think it's a great feeling to give back to them as they give into us. So. It makes me feel really good inside to know that I can help people. I, I love it. I love being able to go out in the community and help people in need. But I think it's really nice for us to come out here in the community and just help people who need it and 
give them stuff that they need that they might not have otherwise. I see thankfulness. The people seem very grateful just for, I mean, it's just a little box of food. It's 20 pounds, but they seem extremely grateful for the food that they're getting and because they're having a hardship up for themselves in their own lives. And so, I mean, a little bit goes a long way. There's just no ending the amount of love that these Converge young adults want to give to the city of Lima. Here's group seven at Woodlawn Baptist Church. <laughs> really great because to help people through the community who need it more than others it's actually a great feeling to help other people who actually need it yeah we're we're praying and hoping that God will use converge to grow to where people from all over the place will come to Lyme Ohio and converge together and uh, worship Jesus One thing I saw was the heart of, of the kids who were at Converge to despite the fact that the weather had really taken a, quite a turn, yet their hearts were open mm -hmm. to reach out and impact people. Hundreds of dollars um, given. There was a story of uh, a team that went to Aldi and they were praying, who do, we, who do we give our money to? And they just walked up to a woman and said, we want to pay for your groceries. It was like $200 and the woman just started crying. Wow. She said, you know, we, I live paycheck to paycheck. I didn't even know how I was going to pay for this. Huh. Um, but and one other really neat thing, I mean, you guys were both there briefly there, um, but there was a young man that just kept showing up and I kept seeing him and talked to him and um, he didn't make it in the video, but we, we saw him at those locations. And you know, the very last thing we did that night was Digital Age Band walked backstage with this young man and said, hey, we're gonna gather around, we're gonna pray for him because he just accepted Christ. Oh, wow. And so we as a group got to do that and that was, that was really neat. Very special, part of that. lots of yeah. great things that are happening all throughout our community. And still to come, we continue to give you some of those great things. Sound advice on preparing your kids for college, how to make sure they're properly prepared. But first, I want to take a moment and say thank you for your generous giving to the Spring to Life campaign. So many uh, people partnering with us to make this happen, Jennifer. We are excited to be near that halfway point. Our goal is $50,000 between now and May 11th. Every dollar you give is used to spread the life-giving message of Jesus Christ to a world in need. We are so thankful for your partnership because together we can reach many for Christ. And yes, we're doing it together with people like Kathy and Van Wert who says, please pray that our morals return to our country. Our desire is to offer programming that displays those types of morals that our country needs to recapture. We thank you for your tax deductible donation today or in the weeks to come as we continue to think spring during the Spring to Life campaign. Now we'll move into the topic of college prep. How many students are truly prepared to take that next step? Here's Dancy. Well, thank you so much, everyone. And uh, we are here talking with uh, Stanford Badley. And Stanford is going to talk about a brand new program called the Prep College Readiness Program. And for any of you that have gone to college, have children who have gone to college, and have even considered the opportunity, this is um, something that, that might be of interest because Stanford, you mentioned that we may be eligible for college and certainly not ready for it. Well, that is indeed true. I think uh, there's somewhat of a misconception. I think students tend to believe that they are college ready. And there's a distinction between college eligible and college ready. The difference is that college ready means that you are able to essentially take the introductory level courses without any need of additional remediation. Many students believe because they meet the ACT requirements, they meet admissions requirements, they're college ready. They're mm -hmm. college eligible, and there's, just, there's a difference. So many students find out within the first semester or first year, excuse me, first quarter, that they're overwhelmed because they really haven't been prepared in ways in which they would be successful in college. Mm -hmm. um, too many students don't make it, and it's not that the students can't be successful. What I'm finding is that students don't have the skills that they need in order to, to be successful. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying college readiness skills, such as time management, mm -hmm. how to manage change, uh, how to read effectively. Those things are not necessarily being taught in the schools, and they're not necessarily going to be addressed when the student enters the university. The university is believing that the students are college ready, and therefore ready to hit the ground running and start in terms of taking courses. And students find that there's a giant, a giant gap there. Many students don't make it the first semester, right. and, 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 and they're devastated. And what I'm finding is that 
students and parents don't really realize this is the biggest transition, the biggest investment in terms of time <laughs> and money uh -huh. in their entire life. It's like buying a house. Mm -hmm. So there really isn't a lot of effective planning. I've been in higher education for 31 years and I've done a lot of work uh, within this particular realm during that time. I retired last year from Wright State University and I thought I was done as an, as an educator. I found out that I'm not. And so in December of this last year, early January, I began to launch this PREP College Readiness Program. Mm -hmm. And PREP is an acronym for preparing rigorously to excel and prevail in college. Begin because when I look at students, you're looking in terms of the dreams and desires and aspirations that young people have going into college, and many of them don't make it. I've seen too many students just not make it. So where do you step in then? Is this a program that, um, is it a workshop? Is it a one-day seminar? What do you offer? Well, I'm offering starting this coming summer. It's going to be two five-week sessions. Okay. And they're going to be operating in terms of two sessions per week, looking at Tuesday and Thursday. Students will have an option of taking a morning session, which would be from 9 to noon, mm -hmm. or an afternoon session from 1 to 4, mm -hmm. two days of the week. Uh, we're looking at the first start date is going to be June 3rd. Mm -hmm. We'll go to about the middle of July. July. Mm -hmm. And then the second one will start in the middle of July till about the middle of August. Okay. And again, there will be a total of 10 sessions. And it's going to essentially address many of the issues that I think students will really need to have and know in order to begin to navigate and negotiate the university system. Uh, it's, 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 been, it's been certainly you know, proven that being successful in college there's a need, there's a tremendous need to be able to address this complex set of uh, uh, individuals that work with students, faculty, staff, students, and parents. And students shoulder the larger responsibility in terms of navigating the university system with no prior experience. I was going to say, for the very first time, for they the are very first time. put out there. And, yeah. and, and so universities in Ohio and across the nation, you know, the persistence and degree completion rates are declining. Yeah, right. But the universities and colleges aren't doing anything themselves. Really the best answer, and I'm a person who's always been interested in terms of developing solutions. Mm -hmm. The solution I think is this program that we're developing. We want to reach students before they get to the university. So um, you've given us the dates and the times. Is there a fee associated with this? There is a fee. The fee is $500. Okay. That include, that's all inclusive in terms of books, and also uh, other incidentals that will go with the program. And this is designed primarily for those seniors entering college, or can it be even those in college, or even those in high school right now? Our, our primary focus is on the students that are graduating from high school. Okay. Because, and I know some people I've talked with have suggested that we start working earlier, and I don't disagree with that. Mm -hmm. I think what we really have to do is start with a population that's in tremendous need. We're okay. talking about a tremendous investment in terms of time and money, and these students are not ready. And it's urgent. And it's urgent. <laughs> yes. And then we will work backwards because the students that participate in the program this year, I'm going to use these as liaisons and ambassadors there next year. They go. will then be able to articulate mm -hmm. the kinds of experiences that they've had. Yeah. And so this will be somewhat of I think flexible in terms of whatever university they go to, whether it's Bowling Green, Ohio State, um, University of Dayton. Sounds good to me. Well, if anyone is interested in contacting you, and, and I'm sure you would like uh, pre-registration, where can they reach you? Well, they can reach me on my website. The okay. website is prep-college.com. Mm -hmm. uh, my P.O. Box is P.O. Box 45, zip code is 45802, Lima, Ohio. Okay, and phone calls accepted as well? Phone calls can be directed to 419-230-6741. All right, wonderful. Stanford Badley, thank you so much for the work you're doing, thank and you. I hope it's successful. I'm expecting it will be. All right, thanks very much. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Dancy. Some excellent information there. Well, it's food time again, and last month was National Noodle Month. But according to retired Sheriff Dan Beck, every month is Noodle Month. He's here now to show us how quick and easy it is to make your own homemade noodles just like Grandma used to make. Hi, Dan. Uh, hi, hi, Jack. Uh, listen, you, the only thing that's different between this today and home is that you put me on that's a time schedule. That's how we operate schedule. in the kitchen. You, you put me on a time schedule. Now I'm a nervous wreck. That's right. We're going to have to do this relatively quickly, but it is simple to make, isn't it? Just a couple ingredients. Absolutely. The only thing you need is a, uh, about a cup of flour, one egg, a little salt. And they take about three quarters of a uh, cup of your flour. Save a little bit. You may need it later. Two ways you can do this, you can actually use the whole egg 
or you can just actually use just the yolks. Uh, my mother used to make angel food cakes, so she would make her noodles with the uh, uh, yolks and save the egg whites for now, the angel food cake. Now, is there a difference there as far as how the noodles will turn out if they're made with the whole egg versus just the yolk? Yes, they will turn out, they'll be much more yellow if you use just the yolk okay. after they're cooked. Flavor and, about the same? A uh, little bit of different flavor, okay. but uh, but they, really? uh, they, they end, ultimately they end up the same. The texture on my homemade noodles is quite different than the commercial ones. They're just a little, little bit more body to them, a little bit more uh, substance. Ah. But uh, they come out pretty good. And you, get, you can't be afraid of getting your hands dirty here. I told gotcha. him today that uh, I don't know what I was going to do when I ran out of flour. <laughs> <laughs> but Zach, if you'll give me a little sure, bit more absolutely. flour in here. And the thing I do is stir them up with a fork. I mix the uh, eggs in. You actually saw me put another egg in there. I, Actually, I put just a little too much flour in. Gotcha. Or put too much egg in for the flour, <clears throat> so we're gonna. Andy, I did notice you've got a, a wonderful, well, knife, but also. <laughs> this way you cut the noodles you know, blue. Apron. My law enforcement <laughs> career, I have committed the most fatal flaw. Don't give somebody else your knife. Right? <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's already been done today. But huh? He's also got some sort of contraption over there. I hope we get to talk about. This here. was okay, a garage sale sure. item, wasn't it? Yeah, this is, it really was. Couple dollars, and you can make different types of noodles. We, we bought that. That's about a thirty, forty dollar uh, noodle. Actually, the one end uh, flattens the noodle, okay. and the other you have, can cut them thick or thin. Okay. Really makes a really consistent noodle. Mine, I very seldom use that because I just try to keep my life simple. Okay, sir. Can I have this? <laughs> got five bucks. <laughs> so what are you doing now? You've mixed the uh, right. flour and egg together. You've gotten it out. I mixed the flour and egg together, and I got a nice dry batter here. And I'm yeah. probably going to put more flour on it. I'm going to put just, I'll tell you what, dump a little flour in here if you okay. will. Okay, yep. And what I'm going to do is put a little flour on my uh, rolling pin. Okay. And put a little flour on top of my dough here so I don't uh, uh, get too sticky. <clears throat> and I actually, and you can t roll this out as thin as you want. They're going to, once you dry these, and you cook them, they are going to double about in thickness and size. Really? Yeah. And uh, that's purely a rough estimate, but <laughs> you know, very rough. Mathematical data to <laughs> But I'm the expert here, so it's my story. I'm sticking <laughs> with it, buddy. <laughs> so what I'm I, surprised that, does a lot of dough react that way? Or is it I mean, no, it's me, it's my noodles. nervousness. <laughs> what do you mean, does it? The double, the double. Yeah. Do, do most doughs, you know. Well, when you, when you cook any dry, I always figured when I cook rice, when I cook uh, oatmeal, mm -hmm. I always figured about two to one ratio. Okay. You know, it's a, if, if you put a cup of rice in there or a... Oh, that's uh, true, yeah. All right, now, where we are right now, and I'm going to put that right down there. This probably could be a little thinner, but I've only got eight minutes, so I can't do this <laughs> quite... We've got a amount of time on it. Are you making a cinnamon roll now? Looks like you're going to roll it up. You wish. I'm <laughs> <laughs> What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this in half, and I'm going to roll half of it, and I'm going to make a rolled noodle. Okay. And it's so Let's tilt that up a little bit. I tilt it up and get my rolling pin and watch my knife. Ooh. <laughs> I noticed you kept the knife on your side. This <laughs> you must feel insecure. Went from the knife to the rolling pin. <laughs> That's all you have to do on that side. What I'm going to do with this side is I'm going to make some square noodles. I'm going to pull that out of the way. If you don't want to go through the bother rolling it, just take your dough. Cut it into squares. Mm. Cut them any size you want. My German grandmother on my father's side used to make her noodle soup with square noodles. I don't know what that means, if she was lazy or <laughs> liked them better, if it had a different flavor. Huh. So you just, but put your noodles, once they are rolled out, on a clean towel, and they're gonna just dry there for a couple hours. Now, if you're in a hurry, you could actually drop those into the, uh, water the broth that you're going to cook them in. Now would there be a difference in uh, the way that they turn out if you let them dry first or if you just threw them right in the boiling water? No, a lot of times people will dry them out just to, they want to use them later. Oh, okay. I'd, I wouldn't want them, you can freeze these, you can actually probably leave them out dry. I think with the food standards anymore, I think in eggs, I think uh, people would want to be uh, yeah. very careful. Right. Now these noodles are actually very long and I could cut them or I could break them up. The only thing you need to do now is just let those dry. Okay. Now they wouldn't taste good right now, right? These over here might. They need to. We do have a finished product over here, Andy. If you take a look at these, 
These are the uh, the square noodles. Don't eat the raw noodles. <laughs> no, no. Here's no. what the other ones will turn out. Well, we we're hoping for some Alfredo sauce, but uh, that's next week. That All might right. be next week. How's it taste? That's very I'm good. Try one here. They're they're just a little chewier than the regular. Need a little salt. I should have put a little salt in those. Uh, half mm. a teaspoon of salt would probably be adequate for that. Okay. Very good. Can you pass some more over, Zach? You, I certainly can. Yep. And we do have some water boiling in here, so let's pretend that we are trying to do this in a hurry. We can throw them in through the water. Yes. Is that right? The only thing you have to do, oh. <laughs> leave my noodles alone. Come on. <laughs> you can actually just take those. Now, what do you want to do, especially if you're putting them in soft, which you, you certainly can. I've got a noodle. I've been, oh, you're there's exactly. boiling water all so, over me. But when that water is boiling, just put your noodles in, and, and uh, you want to make sure that they separate. When they're dried, they separate a lot better than when they're moist ah, like this. Okay. And that's another reason. If you want to store these over time, put them in a Ziploc bag, put them in the freezer after they've dried. Okay. Well, great. And such an easy thing to do, too. Yeah. Quick and easy. It took us what? We did it in eight did minutes. I, did right? I do that in eight minutes? You did. Good Seven job. minutes, yeah. actually. i got to quit sloughing at home. My wife's <laughs> going to give me another job to do. <laughs> so just another opportunity for our viewers at home to uh, just uh, do maybe a little cooking. If you haven't done this before, maybe you have your own way of doing it. A lot of people do make homemade noodles. Let us know. Let us know if there's some tips and tricks. Maybe Dan will learn something from you. Uh, so we invite you to, to just contact us regarding your homemade noodles. Still good? Yeah, they get better with each taste. All right. Well, Dan, thanks for you being on lunch. today. No, yeah, my pleasure. Appreciate it. <laughs> Flour, Andy, thanks for attacking me with boiling water. I think you're all right. There we go. Now it looks like it works. I like your apron. All right. We're going to throw it back to Mark and Jennifer. Guys? Thanks, guys. That is some oodles of noodles. <laughs> Sorry, Zach. Had to do it. Before we close, we again want to share our excitement about the Spring to Life campaign. Together, we're raising $50,000 to continue opportunities to share the life-giving hope of Jesus Christ. That's why we do shows like Faith and Friends. We have fun making food and laughing together, but in the end, it's all about the saving message of Jesus Christ. It's also why we make sure you have access to biblically sound preaching and teaching. And your ongoing support also allows for safe, family-friendly primetime programming, including The Andy Griffith Show, all of those other great shows. Will you join TV44 as we together raise $50,000 between now and May 11th? Visit WTLW.com or call 419-339-4444. Thank you so much for being a financial partner with TV44. And you're back. You uh, survived the Wipe noodles. The flour off. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. The, the cooked ones are better than the raw ones. I will pass that word of wisdom along. Yeah, well, that's probably a good idea to eat them cooked in that raw. Uh, it looks so much like cookie dough. It's just had not, to, I know. Well, you shouldn't eat cookie dough raw either, but that's another segment. <laughs> we do that next week. And then we go all over to the hospital. And I'm going to tell you, though, he, he does make phenomenal Alfredo sauce. So oh, you might so have we to try to convince two. him to come back because it is, uh, it is, I have been, very, I have been very privileged since he retired. <laughs> mm. uh, I've, it's not been a bad, bad gig for me. Got some good food out of this. <laughs> well, let's take a look now as we close at our verse of the day. James Chapter 1, verses 2 through 5. Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Remember, we're praying for you. So until next time, keep persevering, keep pressing on. Have a great week, everyone.